Up next, I'd love to welcome Saxon from Renewable Rebirth to the stage. Join me for another uproarious applause for Saxon. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so grateful to be here today. And speaking from my experience working in the renewable industry, one of the major issues that we're experiencing is as we've spent decades trying to convince people to put up solar panels, wind turbines, energy storage, the reality is uh, there's been very little thought put into what happens when the stuff doesn't work anymore. And just like every other infrastructure that has come before us, there is still issues and challenges even as the technology begins to step in to fill that role. As we see landfilling of solar panels at times due to the cost basis for the technology that does exist and the supply chain issues, there's some real challenges going on with this market. In particular, you can see these numbers, which I know are inaccurate because I'm already doing some of the work doing decommissioning in 2020 in this decade and is not represented in this chart already. The reality is, as a member of the Osage Nation, this isn't the first time we've come across real issues with our energy infrastructure. As documented by the recent film adaption of The Killers of the Flower Moon, our people were ravaged when we discovered oil on the land. When people extracted that wealth, they took the opportunity to separate the Osage from it, with dozens, if not hundreds, of people brutally murdered, including members of my own family who fled. And the reality is that as we're looking at this chart here, as we're looking at this, all of these orphaned oil wells that generated profit for people outside of the reservation have now been abandoned and no one is funding this to be able to get this removed. As we're starting to see some attention put on this, it's just not enough. And in reality, it goes beyond this with the entire waste management solutions in the area not even being developed enough to handle residential and commercial waste as well as issues from recent tornadoes and other natural disasters. We have a solution in many of the partnerships that we've developed with panel recycling, wind turbine remanufacturing, reuse opportunities. We already have the capacity to deploy, but we need the funding, the support, and the capacity to train the workforce for this, to actually invest in the technology to bring costs down. So it's not more affordable to just throw this in the nearest landfill that just happens to be on indigenous land, whether it's the Navajo from Californian solar panels or in the Midwest down in the Osage Nation. There's tons of benefits from this in terms of employment, in terms of potential tax revenue for local bases, uh, for government and for tribal leaders. And our team is uniquely positioned. I get to work with my brother who is a McCracken fellow over at NYU getting his PhD. I started my firm at the beginning of this year, really eighth generation consulting, doing professional consulting with sustainability issues, renewable issues. But the reality is it's, it's not enough. Um, as we've developed these partnerships, as we have letters of support from these industry leaders, from leaders in the Osage Nation, from folks who are actively doing recycling in the actual original manufacturing of panels, we're not seeing that there is enough happening quickly enough. I have spent every penny of my life savings, I have spent every moment of my time, and I have spent every inch of my heart on this particular issue. And the reality here is that we need folks who are impassioned to not only solve the underlying climate issues at play here, the issues for indigenous communities, resolving the legacy of this trauma, and being able to help create jobs that are actually future proof for people on the nation who don't otherwise have the opportunity to invest in green energy. When my great grandmother was very young and her family basically fled in fear, it was about a little over 100 years ago. And this represents the first opportunity that my family has had to actually reclaim a part of our legacy and a part of the reservation, to be able to purchase property, to be able to start a business, to be able to actually employ internships currently. And the thing is that this is not going to be possible if we cannot get more folks who are investing particularly in our region and particularly in our people. I always thought that my great grandmother's name was Mima because she died when I was very young. And she was too scared to tell the stories of our people. And she was never able to really share that. And I would really like to be able to find a way to bring what I have been able to receive so beautifully from the renewable industry, from sustainability and climate advocates, back to my people who have been affected by not only the energy transition in the 1900s, but now as we move into the future with clean energy, that we do not repeat the same issues that are happening. Thank you.